Hi, and welcome to another edition of Station Featuring at Station F. I'm Roxanne Barza, the director, and I'm really excited because today we have Satya Nadella, CEO of Microsoft. Satya, I'm so thrilled about this, I can't even tell you. Um, I have a question for you, obviously regarding AI, because Microsoft's uh, topic at Station F is AI, the AI factory. Um, everyone seems to be super excited about this topic. You guys have invested a lot in AI over the past few years. France, UK, all the different countries in the world want to be the leader in AI. Is this hype? What's going on? You know, first of all, thank you so much, Roxanne, for having me. But it's fantastic to be in France and being at Station F. Um, you know, AI has gone through a bit of a renaissance uh, in terms of the capability itself, whether if you take speech or machine translation or vision, uh, even just in the last four years, when I look at even Microsoft's own um, breakthroughs uh, in terms of just human parity, it's pretty stunning. From 2016 to 2018, pretty much we've achieved human parity on all of these. But the thing that's most exciting, even the startups I saw today, was how we're democratizing it or even commoditizing it. So to your point, uh, I think the AI is going from hype to becoming much more practical. In other words, it's there such that anyone can use it to create more AI. Uh, this entire notion of AI being something that is scarce uh, is to being more plentiful is the transition. And it's you know, places like here uh, that you see it. Uh, even the five startups I, I got to see here were all basically taking some of the latest breakthroughs, but more importantly, creating their own breakthroughs. And that means the entire notion of being grounded in what is the practical way AI can be deployed across industries in any any country uh, is the phase we are in and it's great to see it. So this is just the beginning. Um, tell me, you've seen then obviously some startups at Station F, you've probably seen AI everywhere you go. What are some of the projects that have really struck you? You know, for me, uh, one of the things that mo most excites me is how AI is in fact empowering human beings more. I had got a chance to see a tablet that someone was building uh, for the visually impaired, uh, where they were, had a new kind of glass uh, with braille uh, so that you could have multiple input uh, for someone uh, who has visual impairment, but the device is the same device. Uh, it's a regular Windows tablet uh, like any other student. Uh, so that ability to use, whether it's speech, and braille input together and fundamentally transform how someone with visual impairment can fully participate is what really is fantastic to see. You take that extreme and then on the other side, someone who's building out essentially a grid management software to optimize how, for example, uh, energy is used, uh, which can have a huge uh, bearing on uh, carbon footprint. So these are two amazing examples. Both are fundamentally driven because of AI breakthroughs, uh, but these are practical and yet highly impactful examples. Wonderful. I love that they come from Station F. Yeah. Um, so we talk a lot about transformation, a lot about cultural transformation. Um, tell me about some of the cultural changes that have been made at Microsoft and why. See, for us, you know, any successful company, uh, in order to remain successful, has to sort of treat culture as a first-class thing. Because in some sense, startups all start because of a brilliant idea. And when the idea becomes a hit, they become a scale-up in a very successful company. But in some sense, the culture and capability grows implicitly uh, in support of the concept. But any concept, which may be however novel it is, ultimately will run out of gas. The question is, how are you going to come up with new concepts? And that's where culture then becomes first class. In our case, given that we've had a lot of success over the 43 years, uh, we had to sort of go back and say, let's not be the know-it-alls, but be the learn-it-alls. So we took inspiration from this work around child psychology, around growth mindset, uh, and really adopted it as the cultural meme. Uh, and the goal here is to never uh, act as if you know it all, uh, but every day uh, you are comfortable uh, learning, you are comfortable in your imperfections, if you will. Uh, and that's been very, very helpful for us to even frame the conversation. I love that. I love the, the learn it alls. That's terrific. Um, so you've been everywhere, and I feel like everywhere that there's innovation. <laughs> so you've seen tons of probably spaces similar to Station F. Tell me, what are your impressions being here? I think the thing that I found even today uh, at Station F, it's, it's just 
the quiet energy, if I could pick the word, <laughs> uh, because in some sense what I'm seeing is uh, a tremendous human uh, capital, obviously. Uh, you're able to attract a lot of people um, with great ideas, but what seems to be uh, amazing here is the way they're able to translate uh, their idea and concept into high impact, uh, you know, uh, startups, uh, which I think uh, are going to be a real uh, change maker, uh, not only in this economy but all over the world. Uh, but I think there's, uh, you've got something that's very, very special going. Thank you. Um, and I'd love to finish with some concrete advice for startups. Maybe some of the startups you saw today, maybe startups you've seen elsewhere. What is what is some advice that you can really give them to help make their business a success? I mean, I think all uh, startups uh, that you know have to succeed, there's one core attribute, which is persistence. But the persistence in what? It's the ability to meet the unmet, unarticulated needs, right? Because you, when you think about it, if it was that clear, uh, it would have probably already been done. So it's that uncertainty that you're trying to navigate. Uh, and that requires, I think, that deep, deep customer obsession. I like to describe it as empathy, uh, which is a strange word to use, but I feel is the operative word because in some sense, every entrepreneur has deep empathy for some use case, some user need that's not well articulated, that definitely is not being met today. Uh, being able to persist in that quest uh, you may not even start with a full understanding yourself of that unmet and articulated needs, but by developing that deeper sense of empathy every day, uh, you get it. Uh, and that's what I think makes uh, entrepreneurs and startup founders very special. Brilliant. We'll be sure to tell all the startups. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you, Roxanne.